We're now live on YouTube, starting us up on Rumble. Good morning, hello, and welcome to this date in history, aka <coughs> TDH. This show is about uh, you know cool, interesting things that happened today throughout the annals of uh, history. Join us as we delve into yesteryear, not only for important and interesting happenings, but to possibly even answer questions you don't realize you have. I am Aozander. King's Refuge. Uh oh well where where'd Connor go? I guess he's not he's here. Left. Yeah okay. Um and uh, we uh, hopefully sooner rather than later we'll be joined by the Golden Loon. Um and of course you viewer are you thank you very much for coming in and watching us. Uh today is uh, August eighteenth. Uh it is Sunday aka Sun's Day, uh, two thousand fourteen. Uh, 2024. Wow I'm I'm off by a decade. 2014, what the hell? Where did that come from? Anyway, uh, good Sir King, you want to start us off in 293 BC? I'm setting up my camera. Alright. Uh, we have the oldest known Roman temple to Venus was founded starting the institution of Venalia Rustica, the Grape Harvest Festival. Alright. The whole festival, like, you know, and, uh, that was in Rome and everything, so obviously yeah. about wine and everything. Sure. Um, you know, uh, Bacchus, I believe, you know, was the That's god a good of revelry. For something to be about wine. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, like uh, you remember the original Fantasia, right? Uh, Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, but like, uh, remember the one with uh, all the unicorns and everything? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they ran into the humans, and then there's that one, you know, like little fat balding guy who's yeah. like always drunk and everything yeah that's actually i think that's a depiction of bacchus the roman god of revelry mm. Mm. you know and he's always drinking wine he's partying and everything because okay. he's the god of party you know the god of revelry uh for rome at least and as we know you know rome they they pretty much stole the pantheon from the greek you know theology yeah and all that stuff uh, anyway, let's move on up here from, um, wow, uh, from 293 B.C. to 1201. So that's like 1,400 years right there. Hey, there he is. Hey. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, what do we got? Uh, actually, I'll take this one. It's short. Uh, 1201, the city of Riga was founded. So, you know, Riga, wherever Riga is, you know. Rigola, not the same. Huh? Uh, no, I think that's Ricola. <laughs> Ricola. Ricola, yeah, you're yeah. right. Well, I improvised. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Riga, Riga, I don't <clears throat> know. Whatever that city is. Uh, what do we got here in 1217? Uh, first historical record of Scottish scholar Michael Scott eh, signs a date translation at El Betruge on the Spear in Toledo, Spain. Uh, uh, all Betruzzi's on the Sphere. Uh, so let's see here. Let's look this up here really quick. Um, yeah. where, where is my internet? Michael here? Scott. Huh, you know Michael Scott. Records. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Oh. Great Scott. Great Scott. Um, uh, his, okay, this just gave me, uh, the Scholars of Seville, Mathematics and Astronomy. So, and this is saying Astronom, Muslim, uh, Kelleran, Marcaro, so that's a different language, but astronomy, that's astronomy. So, uh, I believe this uh, article that we're talking about is about uh, astronomy. So, because uh, you know, first historical record of Scottish scholar, but he's a scholar. But, you know, you can be a scholar of that, you know, astronomy and everything. Sure. So, uh, all the way in 1217. I mean, why not? Yeah. So. Well, the stars were there. Yeah, yeah, they were. You are correct. What else do we got here? 1289, Pope Nicholas IV publishes decree Supra Montem. All right. Uh, so let, I'll just look up the entire article here really quick. Um, Nicosia. Why did I get Google? That was weird. Um, Third Order of St. Francis, and, and, and we're covering St. Francis, correct? Um, no, this is Pope Nicholas. So um, let's see here. I can, I can move this over here, actually. That will make it a little bit easier. Uh, it says the Third Order of St. Francis 1221 and this is 1289 so this is completely different. So, oh here we go Pope Nicholas IV. Alright, Super Matrim. Uh, the, uh, the approbation of the Third Rule of the Brothers and Sisters of the Third Order instituted by uh, B.I. <laughs> Francis for seculars living in their own homes called 
Terrateries. Ter terrateries. Huh. So it's like it's about how, how these certain people live is what this is about? I guess. I guess. If anybody knows more, like let us know in the comment section. What else do we got here? 1418 competition announced to design the Dome of Florence Cathedral. Main competitors Lorenzo Giberti and Filippo Filippo Brun L. Ish. Supported by Cosmo D. Bed. Medici. Medici. Yeah. <clears throat> so, like, you know, just to, to make the dome of this cathedral, okay. <clears throat> well, that's pretty interesting. <clears throat> like, I like things like that. Like, it's not just like, okay, we have the whole structure, now let's build it. Like, they build it in phases, and they provide, uh, um, like, opportunities for other people to, you know, leave their mark on history. Like, well, especially when you're looking at the 1400s and what they were able to build. I mean, it is, it is awe-inspiring. Oh, yeah. Uh, 1564 here, Spanish King Philip II joined the Council of Trent. And what is the Council of Trent? Well, let's look that up here really quick. You know, just surface-level scratch. Council of Trent. Um, let's see. Uh, held between 1545 and 1563 in Trent, or Trento. Now in northern Italy was the nineteenth uh, was the nineteenth ecumenical council of the Catholic Church, prompted by the Protestant Reformation at the time. It has been described as the embodiment of the Counter Reformation. So he's part of uh, old Thimblehead here is part of the <laughs> Counter Reformation. Yeah. All right then. Council of Trent. Yeah. 15, sounds kind of important. Yeah, it does. That's why uh, I wanted to look it history, up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fifteen eighty-seven. Saul Wall. What a name, Saul Wall. <laughs> Was elected king of Poland according to legend. Um, I didn't realize legend is as far recent as the 1500s. You yeah. know, you think legend is you know thousands of years, uh, but uh, obviously not according to this. So uh, you know, according to Polish legend, this is uh, the, the guy Saul Wall, which sounds like you know a name made king up of in Poland. Myth. Yeah. Uh, what do we have here in 1612? 1612 Pendle Witch Trial begins with 10 people accused of witchcraft in Lancaster, England. Key witness is a nine-year-old boy. Oh, great. Wow, so a nine-year-old boy is just going around. <clears throat> that makes know, it definitive, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, people are very superstitious to everything, but, you know, they didn't stop to think that maybe he was just salty, that they took his frisbee away or something. <laughs> Give me back my ball or I'll accuse you of witchcraft. I'll tell mommy. <laughs> Yeah. They'll burn you at the stake. Yeah. Uh, what else do we got here? Oh, well, you know, speaking of burning at the stake, <laughs> take us away, King. Urban Grandier, accused of convicted of sorcery, is burned alive in London, France. Well, Loan. sorcery or witchcraft, you know, all yeah. the same. Yeah. Oh, Loudon. Loudon, yeah. Loudon. Loudon? I don't know. It's a French Loudon. name. Loudon? So. <coughs> I, I don't know. Is it is like it a loud Luden. area? I like Luden better. Luden. I, I get gluten from Luden. <laughs> uh, 1636, the covenant of the town of Dedham, Massachusetts was first signed. So like... Dedham. You know, yeah. So is that like, you know, like the, the creation of it? The, the covenant of the town of Dedham. I don't know like, why it reminds me of Jeff Dunham. Dot com. <laughs> uh, but no, like, it, it, uh, Deadham. Deadham Covenant. Uh, what does this say? Uh, it was a covenant that governed the early settlement of Deadham, Massachusetts. It mandated that only those with similar Puritan community values could live in the town and set about a method of, for mediating disputes. It also required each resident to pay their fair share of taxes for the common good. Eventually, 125 men would sign this covenant. So uh, it was a religious... Your fair share. It was a religious governmental order yeah. for the town itself. And taxes. Yeah, well, of course, ta taxes. You know, with government comes taxes. Yeah. You know, uh, well, you know, even you know, religion, like you know, you know alms. You know, you know, for God and everything, yeah. they pass yeah. the oh, dish and all that stuff. Uh, 1686, Giovanni Cassini reported seeing a satellite orbiting Venus. You know, a satellite being like a moon or something. You know, because there, there's there's yeah. satellites, there's natural natural satellites which. Technically, our moon, the Earth's moon, is a natural satellite. 
It is a satellite, you know. Is it natural, though? Well, that is up for dispute. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I do subscribe to the theory that it might, you know, I mean, here we go. I'm going to try to, to, to condense my rant here. But, like, you know, anybody listening or watching this, <laughs> you know, like, look into this, you know, make a note. But like uh, the uh, the the ratio like of size comparison and the distance between the Earth and the Moon yeah. is like the exact like it's like one to eight or something I don't know, but like it, it's it's mathematically equivalent to the distance between the Earth and the Sun and the size difference as well. That's why a total uh, you know lunar eclipse almost completely or totally completely covers the Sun. It's completely unnatural. It's it's. It, it, it's almost seemingly obviously man-made and in comparison percentage wise to the you know the, the the size and mass of the of our moon compared to the size and mass of our planet earth our moon you know in percentage wise in comparison is the largest moon ever discovered ever not just in our solar system ever like and supposedly it's the exact size and location that we need to survive. yeah to uh for the tides you know and weather yeah. and, and, and you know to, uh, allow um Life as life we know it. Life to be here, yeah. Life as, as we, we know, know it to exist. Yeah. I mean, like... There's a lot of iffies there, but you got to give it up to natural. I don't know. Yeah. But, yeah, no, like, you know, seriously, look into it. You know, there's there's an accounts of uh, astronauts saying that, uh, like, after... Apollo? Yeah, well, like, after, like, uh, like, after landing, like, on the moon, like, you know, Apollo uh, 11 or something, mm -hmm. the moon rang like a bell quote unquote yeah. like you know but like you know not it's not like ding but like the, the you know the, it, it's it's it rang the way a bell rings not in audio but in function yeah you know and it went on for hours and hours mm -hmm. like you know it wasn't just you know one it was it was reverberate it went back and forth back and forth like seismic activity but it didn't cause any geographical shifting it was just acoustic right and it just kept going and going and going and going weird you know? Very weird, yeah. yeah. And a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. I don't dismiss any of it. Uh, we got a comment here. Toxic Masculinity says, natural. Uh, it's actually a Death Star from Star Wars. Actually, uh, you know what? It's funny that you should bring that up. Uh, I don't think that the... Well, maybe the moon might be, but... Um, I'm not sure if it's Phobos. Is it Phobos? Images? Uh, no, it's not Phobos. Um... But there's a, uh, hold on a second. Death... We talked about Phobos yesterday. Yeah, we were. That's probably why it's on my mind. But Death Star uh, Dwarf Planet. There is a, uh, a, a Dwarf Planet type thing. Um, or what was it? Death Star uh, Asteroid. <coughs> it's like a meteor, asteroid. Oh, here we go. Uh, right here. One of uh, Saturn's moons, Mimas. So uh, let me bigger this here really quick if I can. So at, on the right we obviously have the Death Star. Yeah. But this is one of Saturn's moons, Mimas. Uh -huh. And just just look at, at it. Yeah. That's a little weird, you know, how that has a crater right there. Like. Yeah. You want to talk about something looking like a Death Star? There you go. But is it that weird, and we just project it onto something else? I mean, that crater isn't isn't unique in itself no but like it just, just the happens position to be where the location is yeah. like like you know it's 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 kind of like the same phenomenon about like how we we see you know faces and shapes and that's yeah. part of an evolutionary instinct for survival and self-preservation well, you face know of the moon obviously yeah well no no it's a face on mars well the face on the moon well too, there is a face on the moon yeah. yeah but you know the the mars face is a lot you know yeah yeah, uh, Toxic Mask, uh, like I told you, there's some weird stuff out there. Anyway, uh, what do we got here in 1735? Hmm. 1735, Evening Post begins publishing and in Boston, Massachusetts. All right. That's a long yeah. newspaper, yeah. yeah. 1737, first public admittance to the Salon de Paris ex Art expedition at the Louvre in Paris. All right. Ah. So the first uh, public opening, you know, yeah. uh, at the Louvre. Cool. Not the creation of, but the first. No, but, but the first the public. Well, for the public. Yeah. You know. Who knows how? Maybe a hundred years before that it was. Actually. Well, no, because like like it was the short. Louvre was massive. It was 
uh, it was a palace, yes. Palace, yeah. But shortly after, because because we've we've covered this over the past week, I'm not oh, sure okay. if you were here or not. But uh, after you know one of the revolutions, the Louvre actually got turned into a public space, and then they decided to turn it into a museum. Yeah. And then I think this is when, because obviously there was no bourgeois, there was no royalty. That was the whole point of the whole revolution, to overthrow yeah. the monarchy. So this, you know, from the very start, it was for the public. So I believe this is when, like, you know, they finally opened it for the public. Yeah. It was never for any private or any... There, there was no elites in France at the time, you know? So wouldn't that be a glorious world to have everybody be, you know, people? Really, like, really think there was no elites? You really think that? I mean, who overthrew him became the elite. Well, even yeah. if it wasn't in uh, in a certain fashion or lifestyle, there were still <laughs> elites dictating what they were going to do in France. Yeah, yeah. There, there always is people in power. That is correct. You know, so, um, but you know, still pretty cool. It that, changed. You know, that, that, Granted, it changed yeah. drastically. <coughs> drastically. I mean, like, you know, there are elites in this country, like, like all the founding fathers, like, well, not of all course. of them, but a lot of them, like, you know, they, they risked it all. Like, they were part of the elites, like, you know, like, a lot of them, I mean, hell, uh, what's his face, uh, ben, Benjamin Franklin, like, was, like, the governor of Virginia or something like that. He, like, he was the guy, or the, he was the president of Virginia, he was the president of the colony, you know. He, well, so. that was one of the reasons why there was such a debate between keeping the federal government together after the victory yeah. uh, over England. Uh, and there's a big fight about it. And uh, going back to the original colonies with no federal government because of that elitism that would cr be created. Yeah, there's that uh, famous quote, why should I uh, trade uh, one... Um, <coughs> uh, one for another. You know, that, uh, what, was, what was the term? Like one dictator or one... No, tyrant. Why should I trade one tyrant 3,000 miles away for 3,000 tyrants one mile away? You know, from <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. from the Patriot. Ah, you know? okay. Yeah. Like, and, and that rings incredibly true today. Like, just look at Congress. Look at the House. Look at Senate. Look at everything. Like, that's what we did. Well, so the states have relinquished far too much power oh, man. to the feds. Far too much. Far too much. Anyway, let's get back on track. Uh, 1769, a lightning strike on the bastion of San Naro in Brescia, Italy, ignited 90 tons of gunpowder, killing 3,000 people. Why are you storing gunpowder in a church? 1769. You know, in, in Italy. So enemies wouldn't uh, attack it? Well, God attacked it. <laughs> <Like>. <laughs> It's a church. <laughs> yeah, I was like, no bullets for you. Yeah. That. <laughs> my house, my temple is not a warehouse. You know? For real. I know. How d dare you. How dare you. Uh, 1795, Curaco <laughs> Governor De Vere sent militia to stop rebellious slaves. Oh, man. Mm. Uh, the slaves are revolting. Oh, yes, they are. They are quite ugly. No, no, I mean they're they're rising up. Oh, oh, that's not good. <laughs> what do we got here in 1817 1817 60 to 70 feet sea serpent sightings reported offshore Gloucester Massachusetts whoa uh, 60 to 70 foot believe. sea serpent I can't, can't buy into that eh, I don't know man we, we don't know what's down there I mean you know, we, we're discovering okay. a lot of new stuff I mean um, like the more recent discovery on the larger of the spectrum was the the colossal squid, the giant squid. Uh -huh. You know, and but maybe that, that's what they saw. And uh, it got translated into. I don't think they I go. I think there's a seventy foot squid. Yeah, anywhere. they might have seen a couple squids somehow, like up there, and they attributed the, mm -hmm. like both as one yeah. unit instead of two, because like giant squids, they grow up to what seventeen to twenty feet long, which is hey, you know. Right. Not if, even, if, I mean, if, I've always thought to myself, like, if you ever thought of like what aliens would look like go to the bottom of the ocean floor yeah oh yeah and look around yeah. well they, they, they've some discovered weird life looking down things the down there where in theory there shouldn't be any life whatsoever yeah and it is yeah well i mean like you know t case in point the extremophiles and i'm not even talking about <clears throat> the tardigrades you know which i'm pretty sure everybody knows what a tardigrade is in today's day and age but mm. i mean like you know they find life living in magma <clears throat> they find life living in you know the the heat vents on the bottom of the ocean floor, those tube worms, yeah, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like hundreds, if not, you know, thousands of degrees of heat, and they're just there. They're flourishing. You know, like, it's, 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 it's... Chilling. 
Yeah. You know, that, that's why I made it a point earlier when we were talking about, like, you know, the moon and how it allows life as we know it yeah. to exist. Because we only know what we perceive. There can be an entire, you know, intelligent species out there of life that's, like, nitrous-based or something. We're sure. carbon-based. Sure. Something could be nitrous-based. Something could be hydrogen-based. They could be crystal people out there. Or some base there. we have no awareness of at all. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, oh, man, dude, like, and, and, and I'm sorry for going on, like, you know, random rants every, like, you know, second or third article. We're only in the 1800s. We're already 20 minutes in. Get it rocking. Like, all right, well, let's move on up here. What do we got? 1826, Scottish explorer Alexander Gordon Lang, traveling across the Sahara, was the first European to reach the fabled trading city of Timbuktu. Ooh. And he was murdered near there a few weeks later. Oh, that's, uh... Where do you live? In Timbuktu? Yeah. yeah. There, there it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was kind of ironic because, I mean, like, well, I don't want to go off on a whole other rant, but, like, no, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people, you know, they go to these to these places, like, uh, in the Middle East, you know, they go backpacking, and they're like, oh, uh, I refuse to believe that these people are violent, and then they end up getting struggle-snuggled and beheaded and, and, you know, stoned and all sorts of stuff, and it's just like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, it, it's awful to think that way about any people, but, like, just for your own personal self, you know, I'd rather be alive, you know, and, and, and as awful as this is to say, I'd rather be intolerant and alive than tolerant and dead. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, you know. Um, oh, yeah, talk to Master Lily is talking about the water bill bears at Tardigrade Space Station. Yeah, no, like, uh, exactly. You proved what, what I was talking about earlier. You know exactly about Tardigrades and everything. Anyway, 1835, the last Potawatomi Indians left Chicago. So, yeah, the trail of, well, probably not the trail of tears, but, you know, the whole, you know, Pushed getting, yeah. 1838, United States Exploring Expedition headed by Charles Wilkes departed for the Pacific Ocean and Antarctica. Mm. All right. Uh, 1840, the American Society of Dental Surgeons was founded in New York. So, you know, dental society Dentist. and everything. Yeah. 1840 as well, a French colony was established on Akara, South Island of New Zealand. Mm. All right. Uh, King, you want to tell us about 1846? 1846, General Stephen W. Kearney's U.S. forces capture Santa Fe, New Mexico. Yeah. All right. Taking more land. Yeah, that has to be during the Spanish-American War or something like... Not the Spanish-American War, you know, the, the Mexican-American War. Um, but I'm not like, sure of the dates of that, but it sounds... It's, it sounds like that should fit in there for sure. I'm not sure the dates of that. Well, I'm not sure if New Mexico was a state back then. It probably was. Probably a territory. But yeah. But, but he captured it. So like you know, and it, it could it, have been a state by then. I don't know. Well, like was it a state of Mexico, and then we just took it? But why would Mexico name a state New Mexico? I don't know. Anyway, what else do we have? Uh, in 1858, Netherlands and Japan signed trade agreement. That's an oh, interesting that's agreement. That's a combo, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 62? 1862, Sioux Indians begins uprising in Minnesota. It's later crushed. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, like, you know, they have every right for an uprising. I don't want an uprising, but we shouldn't be developing an environment where they will get oh, to an uprising to begin with. Like Obviously, and it got pushed out. They got pushed out. All Indians got pushed out. Yeah, Native Americans, yeah. They, they, I believe, I, I've forgotten, weren't the Sioux considered one of the better fighting tribes? Is it the Sioux, or who am I thinking of? Well, Maybe it's the Apaches. Uh, well, Mexico. there's a Sioux, the Apaches, the Navajo, well, the you know, the Pawnee. Like, yeah. there, there's like a Bunch billion in one of them. But some like, of them were no, known for warring. I don't really know that much about, you know, Native Americans and all that stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, I barely, you know, know a handful of names, let alone, you know, you what type of people to they are. they're going to fight. Well, even, even a corner mouse fights. Yeah. You know? What else you got? Uh, 1868, French astronomer Pierre Janssen discovered helium in solar spectrum during eclipse. Ooh. So, like, you know, like, when you eclipse, like, you know, you have that little, you know, beam of yeah. light, yeah. which has its own name, but that's also known, I believe, as a solar spectrum. It's a spectrum of the solarness. Yeah. So, like, you know, you see gas and stuff, and you're like, oh, that's helium or something. You can visibly yeah, so, see it. I wonder if they had a high voice. Huh. <laughs> 
1872, Aaron Montgomery Ward issued the first catalog for his mail order business. It is one sheet listing 163 available items. Yeah, Monkey Ward has been around forever. That has uh, got to be like very small prints. I don't think they're around anymore, though. Montgomery Ward? No, I think they're defunct. So, I mean, totally. I'm pretty sure they are, but that's okay. Uh, is Montgomery Ward still around? Let's see here. Montgomery Ward... Uh, is an online shopping mail order catalog retailer that started several years after the original Montgomery Ward was shut down. So it was the shut current down. Montgomery Ward. So, so it, someone took the name and started up again. Yeah, so that, that's what it looks like here. Uh, well, that's and they have rights to it, so yeah. they are Mon Montgomery Ward. Yeah. yeah, someone was doing that with uh, the R Us. Uh, oh yeah, thing you know, Toys R Us and everything. Yeah. Like it. Like I heard it was going to come back, and then you know that disappeared. Then it was going to come back, and then that disappeared. And then I haven't really. We well, stop and think heard. how much stuff is really gone. It's amazing. Oh yeah, yeah. Like what else? Uh, 1873. We have the first ascent of Mount Whitney, California, at 14,494 mm. feet. Mount Whitney. Yeah. 1891. A hurricane hit Martinique, causing 700 deaths. Yikes. That's not good. No, it's not. I have a double here for some reason. 1896, Adolf Ox, at the age of 39, bought the New York Times. Mm, huh. Never heard of him. Neither have I. Apparently he's quite wealthy. Yeah. Uh, 1909, the mayor of Tokyo, Yukio Ozaki, presented Washington, D.C. with 2,000 cherry trees, which President William Howard Taft decided to plant near the Potomac River. And, you know, that sounds awesome, you know? Yeah. Like, but... Uh, and we covered this on uh, Talkness a while ago. A lot of those cherry trees are wash. Uh, well, no one today for its cherry trees, I'll tell you that. What is it, the fall or the spring? Uh, I think the spring. Be, yeah. It has to be the spring. There's the springs blooming, when they're they bloom. blooming, yeah. yeah. No, but because of, like, you know, uh, uh, there, there's, like, been, like, seasonal flooding. You know, flooding's been getting worse, or, like, the area, uh, is, they're, they're getting rid of them. Oh really? Yeah, they're they're they've already like they're 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 they've been they're, they're spending, getting rid of them or they're losing them. They're, they're both like uh, they they lost a lot to rot. Okay. Uh, because like you know it, it spends you know the, the 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 base of the tree is like underwater. Yeah, it's too wet. It, it gets too wet. It's getting you know it's getting oversaturated, becoming waterlogged. It's rotting. So like you know they're just uh, I saw somewhere here we go uh, right here. <coughs> Park Service to cut down 300 cherry trees for seawall project. Oh, so okay. and it's right that's along. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, well, oh, they for, stopped the flooding. Yeah. For the same reason, like yeah. it's flooding, and that's the land. So they're getting rid of 300 of the 400 trees because they're rotting and everything, and they need that land to build a seawall because that it's area flooding. is flooding, and it's uh, flooding beyond flooding. that yeah. area too. Yeah. Yeah. So it just sucks. That's like, a shame. why? Why you can't? I would you know, like to see the cherry trees uh, blossoming. Yeah. I don't know why you can't transport them. Although, aren't trees like hard to transplant after they've been? There's a lot of trees I, that yeah. have issues I, I transplanting. I don't know specifically, but any oh. tree that's really established, yeah. as these are, yeah. would be very difficult to transport and survive. I at least want them to try. I mean, if you want to, you know, yeah. you want to talk about a waste of taxpayer dollars willingly, I'm willing to waste taxpayer dollars on something like this. You know, like because because they're a gift from Japan. They're hundreds of, you know, they're like over a hundred years old. You know? Oh yeah. They're they're, they're major, like. Well, they're in 1914, like, right there. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here in 1914? <coughs> Swiss. 1914 Swiss track and r road bicycle racer Oscar Egg sets new record, new hour world record of 44.247 kilometers at the outdoor. <clears throat> Velodrome, Buffalo, and Paris record stands until 1933. Wow. Ooh, nice. And you got another 14 here. This guy. U.S. Oh, boo! Boo! Okay, for all you... Oh, he's the worst president. No, he's the worst president. No, he's the worst president. <laughs> yeah, no. This is the worst president. Of his in history, period. There's no, just stop. All right, this little bastard. U.S. World War Wilson issues proclamation of neutrality to keep the United States out of World War One. Uh huh. And, and and how how well did that work out? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, no, the reason why King here, and I agree with them, like, you know, yeah, of course, there have probably, like, you know, been presidents who've done arguably worse things, but if it wasn't for this scum-sucking piece of crap, Woodrow Wilson, we would not have had the IRS. We would not have, like, you know, the Federal Reserve. We would not have all these things, all these building blocks that allowed later people to do even, even worse things. You got to look at the foundation before blaming the roof, you know? So, anyway, uh, continue on before I continue ranting. Uh, 1915. <laughs> oh, boy, we could go on about this oh, guy. Oh, man, dude. 1915, Braves feel opens in Boston to see Braves beat St. Louis Cardinals 3 1. So it's Braves Fields in yeah. Boston. I didn't, I never heard of that before. That's what it was called, at least. I, mean, I it's guess probably so. called something else now. It's been bought by, like, other than I the Green know. Monster. I don't know what they would call it. I don't know. Well, the green monster is just the it's one the section. Wall. It's yeah. the wall out there, it's a, yeah. and it's green. Yeah. I need my coffee. Yeah. Coffee. 1917, what? we have a great fire in Thessaloniki, Greece. Destroyed 32% of the city, leaving 70,000 individuals homeless. Yikes. 32%? Wow. Jeez, that's, that's a third of the city. Yeah. Almost. Uh, while that was going on, the Dutch Naval Air Force formed, MLD. So mm -hmm. awesome. You know, the Netherlands yeah. has an Air Force. Cool. Yeah. 1917 as well, the Queen's Hospital opened to provide pioneering plastic surgery for World War I soldiers Ooh. led by Harold Gillies in Sidcup, England. Yes. Wow. The plastic surgery industry got a, like, majorly boomed after wow. the First World War. Well, after, you know, the Civil yeah. War, but First World War as well. The amount of prosthetics, you know, fake sections of entire faces, like... You know, like, a lot of these people, you know, like, got well, really banged up. Uh, you, know. you know, and I hate to even say this, but a lot of good things can and do come out of war. This is one of them. You yeah. Know, the advancements in uh, uh, those kind of surgeries, you know, huge. And unfortunately, it took a war to really, really push it and yeah. make it happen. But I prosthetics mean, like... and everything else, yeah. But let me provide well, an so example. Many, like, yeah. you know, you think of prosthetics, you think of arms, legs, yeah. feet, hands, yeah. you know, fingers and things. Yeah. But I mean, okay, uh, take a look at this. Open, let me see if I can bigger this image. The entire, like, two-thirds of his lower face, that's all fake. Look oh, at it, it's wow. a mask. Wow. So, you know, that's that's a face prosthetic. Yeah. You know, he probably right. doesn't have a lower about, face, you know? Think about it. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you, you've seen stories, you know, about, the, you know, that one lady, you know, who got her face tore off by the chimpanzee. Yeah. You've heard of that story of the guy who got a sinus yeah, infection. Yeah. Yeah. And, like, it was some freak bacterial infection. He had to scoop out his eyes and his oh, nose. Okay. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I know it's awful. I know it's awful. But, I mean, you know, all of that stuff, all these inventions. Look at this. A partial. We have a nose and part, you know. Uh, most yeah. of one side of a cheek. And look at the date this is being developed. I mean, this and is what you're talking about. What more can let me open this and after do it. it? Like it's it's yeah. like look at look at this. What he actually looks like here, and then this is with his prosthetic. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's it's astonishing. Back in this 1917. Yeah. Jeez, come on. Yeah. Uh, 1919, Anti-Cigarette League of America formed in Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Oh, that goes oh, way back. Yeah, let me angle this down a little bit. Actually, hold on a second. Let me. Yeah, there we go. Is this gonna work? So that way, I'm trying to get us more in the, the picture here, because because it was cutting me off like right here uh, or something. So I'm... Let's move that thing up. <laughs> Cut it off completely. Yeah. Uh, 1920. State Representative Harry T. Byrne, 24, cast a deciding vote. In Tennessee, Tennessee's, and thus America's ratification of the Nineteenth Amendment to the Constitution, allowing women suffrage. After reading a letter from his mother, poor suffering women. We gotta put a stop to that, guys. Yeah. But yeah, can you okay. imagine like a, a like incomprehensibly important historical alteration here? And it was you know this one guy cast the deciding vote. For the state and by extension the entire country because the state you know like just he's the last guy yay or nay yeah and yeah wow and he was 24 years old like oh my god <laughs> like that guy's a hero uh what else do we got here <clears throat> nineteen twenty four France begins withdrawing troops from the Ru uh, Ru 
Yeah. From the Ruhr. I believe that's one of the rivers that, uh, you know, trench warfare fought along. Like the Rhine, the Ruhr, the this, the that, you know. So, uh, I think this is after the First World War. Uh, let me look up the Ruhr really yeah, quick. Yeah, it says post World War I. Well, I, I wrote that in myself. Oh, that's my uh, own uh, notes. What is the Ruhr? Uh, it is the largest urban area in Germany and a third of the European Union. So, so it's an urban area. So, yeah. I, so I, I guess you know uh, France, you know French troops well, lost were World War One. They started uh, withdrawing from there. Yeah. So and, and bringing this their is trips, bringing their troops home. Nineteen twenty four is about six years afterwards. So like you know this yeah. makes sense. Like you know it's it's been six years. They're pulling out. You know just leaving yeah. Germany to Germans. So. So I, I I think I was right in my little note there. This is you know yeah post World War One World War One for yeah. sure post World War One. But yeah, they're pulling out. That's exactly yeah. what it is. Oh, we good, have good so, footnote. Yeah, we have some more post World War One stuff here in uh, twenty five. Nineteen twenty five, Belgium and the U.S. signed treaty about war debts. Oh, oh okay. Right. Belgium like, and, and left uh, <clears throat> Germany dangling with their debt. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, Unmas yeah. 25. <laughs> we knew how that turned out. 1925, yeah. Cardinal Mercier, Mercier warns Belgian Belgians about socialism and liberalism. Yeah, they should have listened. Well, I think they did. You know, I'm not sure. You know, Belgium has not gone down in history as a major political socialist or whatever, any type of nation, communist, capitalist, whatever. So I don't know what Belgium oh. is. <clears throat> like, are they still a monarchy? Like, what kind Look of? It up quick. What government's style is Belgium? Not Bekel. Politics of Belgium. Uh, Ecolio, Democratic, Federalist, Independent. Okay. Socialist Party. Democratic Federalist. Okay. Well, no, that's one of the parties. Actually, I had that wrong. Oh. Uh, policy type: Federal par Federal parliamentary, constitutional monarchy. Huh, so okay, they so it still has, are a monarchy, sounds like. Well, or, no, a but, constitutional monarchy. It, it, you could put that down for us, too, if you want. Because we're not a same. monarchy, though. No, we're not. But, but I don't like that term. What's a constitutional monarchy? A monarchy... It says, what does it say right before that? It says it's a... Uh, uh, a federal parliamentary. Par parliamentary, that's what that's... So about. very much like uh, like Britain, because, you know... Because they're a constitutional monarchy, they're a monarchy because you know what a monarchy is—a yeah. family. Yeah. But they have a constitution. Yeah. You know. And the constitution basically runs it. Yes. So the monarchy would be a figurehead now. Essentially. So. All right. So yeah, they answered my question. Yeah. Uh, what do we got here in twenty-six, and then I'll take us to thirty. Nineteen twenty-six, first televised weather map broadcast for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Washington, D.C. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find it, because that reminds me of uh, this one little clip. Oh, yeah, you, you got to see this, Loon. You got you got to watch this stuff. So. It'll change. Right now, kind of hung up just a little bit. Oh, I moved the map. I didn't know. I, I can do that? No <laughs> I can way. Do that. Did you just discover that? I got to try it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you believe that? Just touch it. You can go oh, anywhere you want. That's so cool. <laughs> I didn't know it. Can I zoom? Oh, 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 oh man! The, the guy it's in the background day. is losing it. It's a great day. Uh, it's a beautiful start this morning. Our temperatures are, are warming up nicely this afternoon, but we're still gonna. I didn't. I just. I've like, never. Seriously. I've never touched it before. Oh my gosh! You can tilt it. What's going on here? All right. Anyway, I'm gonna figure this all out. A beautiful day in the next couple of days. He's like a kid with a new iPhone. Yeah. You know? Oh, look what oh I my there. god! But yeah, no, this is the first televised weather map. So the first, you know, bef what, what yeah. led to this. Yeah. Like, so awesome. Yeah. 1930, Eastern Airlines began passenger service. Yeah, uh, Eastern Airlines. Yeah. That's what goes way back. Uh, are they even still around, or did they become something else? Did they get bought uh, out? Like, I have no idea. Hmm. Uh, they probably been, They could have been bought up by someone else and still have the name fly under that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, 1931, Lou Gehrig hit list in Detroit, hit 1,000th consecutively played game. So okay. he didn't hit the ball, but he hit his 1,000th. Yeah, so. he played the game. 32, Englishman James Mollison was first to fly east to west over the Atlantic. All right. So so it was so first to fly from 
east to west in 32 over the Atlantic. Huh. Okay. Read it one more time. Englishman James Mollison was the first to fly east to west, so going from England to... Yeah, to, yeah. Probably to Canada or the United... Yeah. Probably to New Brunswick, if anything. <laughs> it could like, be. That'd no, be the like, shortest you, point. Like, I'm not bringing it up yeah. for your little dream, but, like, no, no, geographically, it's the shortest point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 1936, we have 106 degree or 106.5 degrees Fahrenheit, the hottest afternoon ever in Iowa. Wow. wow. Mm. Yikes. I, I, I know a couple people in Iowa and everything. Oh. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't like 106.5 degrees. They don't want to break this record. So. Well, it might be broken by by now. I don't think so. I don't know. Has it been it broken? Is. I'll bet you it has been. I don't know. Let us know, somebody. Oh, yeah. six. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we got 1937? 1937, first FM radio construction permit issued. Ooh. It was to W1XOJ WGTR in Boston, <clears throat> Massachusetts. All right. 1838 FDR dedicates Thousand Island Bridge connecting U.S. and Canada. <clears throat> uh, what you put that on a salad or a burger or something like like what do you do mm. with Thousand Island Bridge? Like, <laughs> Uh, 1940, during the Battle of Britain, the air battle known as the Hardest Day occurred. Luftwaffe, the Germans, uh, lost approximately 69 aircraft, and the RAF lost 68 in one of the largest ever air battles. Wow. Mm. So 68 to 69. You know, That's like one lot, side versus the other. A lot of aircraft down. That's a lot. Wow. Yeah. Time, energy, resources, ammo, yeah. people. Yeah. You know, like. Uh, you know, like how many lives will be lost, how many hearts will be broken. Yeah. So 68 so. and 69, pretty much a stalemate. Uh, more or less, yeah. Uh, 1941, German concentration camp Amserfort opened. Yeah. That's not good. Uh. And while that was going on, the Phillies committed eight errors in a baseball game. Okay. You know, which was more important, the opening <laughs> of a concentration camp or the Phillies? Uh, I'd say the concentration camp yeah. is a little bit more historically, you know, Significant. I would have rather gone <clears throat> to the Philly game, though. Yes. Like, uh, yeah, definitely. Um, what do we got here in 1942? Carlson's Raiders land on McKin Gilbert Islands, kill 350 Japanese. Yeah. Woo-hoo! Uh, part of the island hopping campaign. Uh, who, uh, what country was, uh... Carlson's Raiders? I think that was U.S. Like... In 43? 43? Yeah, 43, of course, would be us. Well, yeah, what, yeah, what, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I was brain dead. I was going back into the 30s for some reason. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be us. Absolutely. You, you almost had me questioning reality. I'm just like... <laughs> you know, I, go, I don't know. My dates, you read it, and I uh, <laughs> had it backwards. Yeah. Uh, what else do we have in 43? Call me dyslexic. Well, I'd rather be uh, dyslexic than less dyslexic. <clears throat> Giants future baseball Hall of Fame pitcher Carl Hubble wins his 253rd, 253rd and final game in New York Beach Pittsburgh Pirates 3-2 at the Polo Grounds, New York City. All right. I don't think he got the Hubble Space Force <coughs> named after him, though. No. I think we've been over this. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't think it's him. No. Uh, but there's another 43 that you skipped over, I think. I don't remember you reading it, but maybe you did. Um, final? Final convoy of Jews from Salonkia, Greece, arrives at Auschwitz. Yeah. Oh, oh. Not good. Man. Uh, yeah, at least, you know, it's the final. So much like, pain. Yeah. So much pain. Oh, like, uh, there's this one, um, like, I, I, I wish I had prepared, like, you know, like, but, but you've seen uh, that one guy who had saved, like, a hundred some odd, you know, uh, children. Mm -hmm. Like 143 children or something, mm -hmm. and then they had him on like Mari or whatever show. Um, Mari, he, uh, you remember the, the TV the, show? The Mari show, yeah. I think it was Mari. Hold on a second. Guy who saved uh, over 100 Jews. TV show. Uh, oh, this is it right here. Let me let me play this. All the letters. Back here is the list of all the children. This is Vera Diamant, now Vera Gissing. We did find her name on his list. 
Vera Gissing is with us here tonight. Oh. Hello, Vera. Um, so basically, to provide some backstory, because I'm not sure if uh, it goes into it, because this is a short video, but this man here, uh, obviously when he was younger, yeah. uh, but like he, he harbored and like was part of some underground railroad or something. Well, he saved her. He, he, sa he saved like, a, like 100, 200 yeah. some odd yeah. Jewish children. He hit them. Uh, he hit them and, and, and helped, like, you know, transport them and get them out of there and everything. And, and let me just play this. And uh, I should tell you that you are actually sitting next to Nicholas Winton. <laughs> so that's one of the people yeah. he saved. And it was Aww. just so wonderful. So terribly, terribly touching. Wow. Just wait. Just wait. Is there anyone in our audience tonight yeah. just wait. who owes their life to Nicholas Winton? If so, could you stand up, please? They found everybody they could and brought him in. Yeah. Look at that. Look at all those people there because of him. All children. Oh, my God. That's that's a yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's something. Yeah. There's a there's a silver lining to every black cloud, and and the 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 monsoon that was the Holocaust. <clears throat> some of the greatest you know examples of humanity, like this gentleman mm -hmm. here, were allowed to shine in the darkest of days. <sighs> All right, let's move on up to 1944. Uh, Chargers freed by U.S. Third Army forces during World War II, led by General George S. Patton. So you know, the city of yeah. Chartres, yeah, you know, in France and everything. Uh, 1944 as well. Paris rail workers striked against Nazi occupiers. All right. Could be dangerous. Oh, definitely. Shoot you as quick as not. No, yeah. Well. Uh, 1945. What do we got here? 1945 scheduled demonstrations at Polo Grounds in Ebets Field to. And segregation and organized baseball are called off. Oh, why? Like, did they get rained out or something? Like, I don't know. That's not cool. What else? 1945, Sukaro elected first president of Indonesia, Indonesia by prepare preparatory committee for Indonesian independence. Ooh. So no votes there, huh? Yeah. Well, yeah. So he wasn't elected; he was installed. He's yeah. Yeah. Uh, forty-six. Great year. Yeah. Nineteen forty-six. Golf Writers Associations of America forms. Well, you know, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, it is a great year. <laughs> Absolutely. Because of you, and you know. Not this day, though. Oh well. Um. But yeah, no, like you know, you you were in the golf for a while and everything. Yeah. So like, you know, there's something oh, for I you. still would be one for my hand. Uh, if you want to take the last two forties, it's up to you. Nineteen forty-seven naval torpedo and mine factory explodes in Cadiz, Spain, killing three hundred. Ooh. Whoa. That's a big whoopsie. Yeah. Somebody screwed up there. Torpedo and mine. Oh man. Yikes. It's almost like the mine factory from Whitest Kids You Know. <clears throat> Just because I have no arms, you think I lost them to setting a mine? Like, you know that skit. Yeah. 1949, Hungary adopted, adopts constitution. All right. And somehow, they had a constitution, but uh, the Russians seem to, they're in their sphere, so they became part of the uh, Europe, East European. Uh, the uh, bloc? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 1950, Julian Lahat, the chairman of the Communist Party of Belgium, was assassinated by far-right elements. Hmm. Huh? All right. 1954, James E. Wilkins was the first black to attend a U.S. cabinet meeting. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is. That should be highlighted. Uh, yeah, 1954, uh, it, was not, it is not, but it's in here, so, yeah. 
It should be highlighted. Uh, 1955, between now and the 19th, so you know, between today and tomorrow, essentially, Hurricane Diane killed 400 people in the United States. Ooh. Oh, yikes. 55 as well, we have 46.1 centimeters of rainfall at Westfield, Massachusetts. It's that That's their state record. Whoa, 46.1? Yeah, what, what is uh, 46... 46.1 centimeters to inches. Uh, centimeters to inches. Uh, well, well, tell me. Um, how do you convert? You just, I think you okay. passed Okay, 18.1 inches. So that's over a foot, well over a foot. I wonder uh, uh, over what time period? Well, I guess the this? day. Like, well, you're guessing. Well, this is about today, so... <coughs> I, for a I, day. I presume that's a day. Oh. Anyway, uh, 56, Elvis Presley's You Ain't Nothing But a High Old Dog. And Don't Be Cruel. I don't know how that tune goes. Uh, they both reached number one in the charts, staying there for 11 weeks. This was a record for a single release. Well, there wow. you go. We had this conversation a few days ago. There is always an A and B side on a, on a 45, which was a single, a single record, not an album. Yeah. And... I think Don't Be Cruel was supposed to be the A-side and Hound Dog was the B-side. Ah. Yeah, you said something about it and things were backwards. Yeah. yeah. Oh. and they, Well, they both got one and two, so, yeah. you know, didn't matter what he did. And we have uh, quite a bit of 1958, so I'm going to rattle these off and, you know, just to give you context, all of these next ones all happened on the same day. Fidel Castro made a speech on Cuban Pirate uh, Radio Rebel Day. Floyd Patterson technically knocks out Roy Harris in 13 for heavyweight boxing title at Wrigley Field in Los Angeles, California. There's a Wrigley Field out here in L.A.? There was, yeah, oh. absolutely. That's where the uh, Los Angeles Angels played. They were in the minor leagues. Oh, okay. Uh, the novel Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov was published. Uh, Perez Prado Mambo King received one of the first gold records. Gold, gold records. Mambo King. Did he make Mambo number five? Bump, 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 you know. Uh, 1958 as well, a TV game show scandal investigation started. Um, okay. Well, I wonder if that was a $64,000 question. I remember that scandal. I wonder There's, if that's what it was. Can I don't you know. pop on that real quick and just see if it is? Yeah, let me do a surface level scratch on that article. There's been quite a few scandals, TV show scandals. But that was a big one. Yeah, the 1950s quiz show scandals. Uh, there were a series of scandals involving oh. the producers and contestants of several popular U.S. television quiz shows. These shows producers secretly gave assistance to certain contestants in order to uh, prearrange the show's outcomes while still attempting to deceive the public into believing that these shows were objectives and fair competitions. Producers fixed the shows sometimes with the free consent of contestants and out of various motives, improving ratings, greed, and the lack of regulations prohibiting such conspiracy but they and game show productions. Ones. That's the ones I want well, there's to quite want. a few, you know. Okay. And this happened Move. in 1958. Okay. So, integrity question, 1957 to 58. We have 21. We have the big surprise, Dotto. Huh. Uh, the $64,000 yeah, challenge. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Uh, there's another $64,000. There's one on September 7th. There's one on November 2nd. Tic-tac-toe uh, for love of money. Like, wow, yeah. dude. Like, The one that hit the headlines was $64,000 question. Yeah. And then also in 1958, the United Kingdom issued regional stamps in Northern Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Mm. So all of those rattled off that I just did all happened on the same day. Like, yeah. the wild. Yeah. Like, Wow. And then uh, I'm going to take this 59 here, 1959. Uh, Branch Rickey resigned as Pirates CEO to become president of the Continental League. You know, so you can't have both jobs. So, yeah. you know, you got to let go of one to be promoted to the next one. I can't remember what the Continental League was. It must have been uh, a major league offshoot. It wouldn't have been a minor league deal. No idea. It didn't um, last. Yeah. 1960, Sir King. 1960, first photograph, bounce off satellite, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and... And Richardson, Texas. Cool. Wow. So, so uh, <coughs> from Cedar Rapids, Iowa, they sent it. It bounced off a satellite, and they received it in Richardson, Texas. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Like, every time I read something like this, the first thing I think of is that scene from The Big Bang Theory where they're all on the roof. You know, and they have oh, the yeah, whole yeah, mechanism yeah, yeah, shoot it oh, up we're going to We're going to measure the distance of the moon and everything. And then, like, you know, and then they're like, Psst. Oh, we got it. And then the, the girls were like, oh, when's it going to shoot? Like, oh, we already got it back. Like, I didn't see anything. Well, it's a laser. Like, you know, 
Yeah. And they were just so, like, dumbfounded yeah. and everything, and it's just like... And they were so excited. It's like, dude, I'm excited. Like, you know, they bounced, they sent a signal from the surface of the Earth and sent it, hit it off the moon, and got it back within seconds. It. Yeah, recorded oh, the speed. Dude. Hey, like, that's called nerd fun. Oh, dude. Like, <laughs> that shouldn't just be nerd fun. Like, that yeah. should blow everybody's freaking minds, bro. Like. Yeah. Well, I mean... Like, you know, if, 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 if the Earth is flat, the moon isn't real, and you know, all these crazy wacko, wackadoo theories and all that stuff, you know, like, explain that. Like, explain how you can get to the to the to to a roof and bounce a signal off a moon or, you know, have something bounce off a satellite or something. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah. you know, if, if you can prove something with your own means, oh. then it's infallible. Could you imagine... So, Go, I don't care, going on a roof, going in our backyard, whatever it is, setting something up, bouncing off the moon and receiving it back. That's that's incredible. I mean, that would be amazing. That sounds it? awesome, dude. <laughs> anyway, what else happened in 1960? <clears throat> 1960, the Beatles give their first public performance at the Indra Club in Hamburg. Oh, All right. That's when they went to Germany. Yeah. yeah. I was like, Hamburg, Pennsylvania. No, because no, they had no. already been at that... The, Cavern or whatever it was. Yeah, the that, whatever. They were big there. Yeah, well, that's where they got noticed. So I don't know. Yeah, so. yeah, but I don't know how this would be their first public performance. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess on the road traveling. What else do we have here? Uh, 1962. Peter, Paul, and Mary released their first hit. If I had a hammer. Oh yeah. <laughs> <coughs> Huge. I, I never if heard I that song. If I had a hammer, a hammer in the morning. Hammer in the evening. All right. I get. Did you nail it? Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I've never know. nailed anything vocal in my life. Are you kidding me? Musically vocal, anyways. As a witness, I can attest he is being <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Thanks. You don't have to be honest. Oh, I, I, you I, can I, pump me up a little bit. You know, well, I've heard him in the shower or something. Anything? Give me, give me a nibble. Well, I mean, we, I think we have enough inflation. Uh, what else do we got here? Nineteen sixty-three. James Meredith becomes the first black graduate from University of Mississippi. All right. Ooh, finally. Cool. Nice. Nineteen sixty-three. Holy yeah. cow! And we have been joined by the con, the con air. Oh man. Yes. Hello. Come with me if come with me if you want to live. <laughs> I'll take all of your money. <laughs> yeah, he conned a, bu a bunch of guys out with their money last night. Yeah, yeah, yes, he I won, did. He won the bunch of grown poker. men. He, yeah. what, what? He won the weekly poker. Like you know oh, how? Oh, uh, sweet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was one game out of two. Hey, that's something. Hey, yeah. As long as you walked away with something, that's a win. Yeah. 1964, South Africa banned from the Olympic Games because of apartheid po uh, policies. Yeah, you know, that would I cause remember it. that. Yeah. While that was happening, the Beatles arrived in San Francisco, California on their second U.S. visit and first cross-country tour, encompassing 30 sh 32 shows in 25 cities over 31 days. Okay, because I was going to say, wait a second. <coughs> their first one, and they said the second one here, they went to New York, Ed Sullivan, and played at yeah. New York. Yankee Stadium. This is their second so, U.S. Yes, visit, but second. first cross country. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So that makes sense. Uh, 1967, Boston Red Sox, Tony Conigliaro, no, Conigliaro was beamed by Angels Jack Hamilton at Fenway Park. Injuries including a fractured cheekbone, dislocated jaw, and eye damage kept him from returning for a year and a half and led to improvements in batting helmets. Yikes, man. Yeah. That guy took it to the head. Jesus. Hey, I remember playing, uh, they didn't have a little league in my area, but equivalent to it, it was called a boys league. Uh, when you hashtag when you're the guy that got to make it a little out of. Wear, you just wore your baseball cap up there. Yikes. Uh, 1969, Mick Jagger. Oh, before I go, uh, King, what do you say? I said when they got to make a, a rule because of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, that's that's the best way to get written down in history. Be the reason why they do something, you know. It doesn't necessarily say be a good reason, you know. It just says be the reason. Like, I mean, behind every sign, there's a story. Like that one: "Do not feed hallucinogens to the alligators." Oh man! Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, no, there's actually so a sign in Florida. Yesterday. Do not f feed hallucinogens to the al alligators. Like, you know what, <laughs> let, me, let me, I'll look it up here just to prove that I'm not blowing smoke. Do not feed uh, hallucin... Yeah, it just shows up in automatic uh, fill images. Yeah. Wait, Florida. Do not feed hallucinogens to the alligators. That's probably a good call. Oh, there's your own mushrooms and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, well, that's, that's a... <laughs> But I mean, like, you know, like, they don't just make signs like this for the, for nothing. Somebody out there fed hallucinogens to an alligator and, and caused, a, you know, prompted a reason why we have to tell people not to do so. I mean, we've heard of cocaine bear. Now we have, like, you know, heroin sharks. Like, Portland. yeah. Why are we drugging all of the wild animals? Like, what is wrong with us? You know, leave the animals alone. Uh, but yeah, 1969 here, Mick Jagger was accidentally shot while filming Ned Kelly, and he did survive. I never heard about him getting shot, ever. Neither have I. Ah, that's a first for me. I don't really know who Mick Jagger is. What? But you I, heard of the Rolling Stones? Yes, I, I, I've heard the name, but I don't know okay. who he is. Okay, so, I mean, I'm aging myself out here. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it doesn't require too much hey, effort. Hey, it makes but... you, but I've heard of them, and I <laughs> listen to them actively, so... <laughs> Uh, what do we have here in 1971? <clears throat> New Zealand Prime Minister Keith Holyoke announces in Parliament that New Zealand's combat force would be withdrawn from Vietnam before the end of the year, coinciding with a similar announcement by the Australian government. Ooh. All right. It was a 71. It was going hot and heavy then. Yeah. Which, by the way, later on today, I, uh, I want to get into it. Um, we're going to be talking about a whole thing involving Vietnam and all that stuff in mm. talk show. Uh, it's a point that uh, Pete's brought up earlier this week. Um, and I was going to get into it the next day. But I'm just like, no, you know what? I'd rather have it in talk show and really get into it. Okay. You know, because I have videos oh, I want to play and everything. It's, it's very interesting. Okay. Um, but uh, let's That's move a on. That's must, must see. I guess. Oh, definitely. Must yeah. Uh, what do we got here in 1972? 1972, police find Paul and Linda McCartney 800 pounds in Sweden for cannabis position. Huh. Yeah. Huh? One of them got busted in Japan and it was banned from Japan for life. Yeah, well, like, uh, like on, on the same calendar day, like, actually, like, uh, let's see if I can... Um, uh, it was, uh, oh, it wasn't Mick Jagger, it was uh, Lynn, Paul and Linda McCarthy. Um, let's see, Paul McCarthy. So, yeah. uh, one of them... Oh, sorry. Uh, one of them um, went somewhere, like, as you said, Japan. Like, on, yeah. like, the, I, I, let's just say, like, March 4th. But then, like, two, three, some odd years later, on March 4th, like, the same exact date, he's busted, like, in the Philippines or something. So, like... It's, it's not just that he's habitual, but he did it on the same exact date. Good grief. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can find it here. Um, Some people are just stupid. Oh, definitely. You know, like uh, a basketball player going to Russia with uh, hashish oil. What? Uh, You're stupid. I know, right? Let's uh, see. It's nice show. Uh, well, it's, it's somewhere. It's somewhere. I'm... Like, yeah, it might not even might not even be Paul McCartney. So, but we'll 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 get to it at some point because it repeats itself. Like as I said, it happens on the same date. So you know we'll be talking about him getting busted one year, and then like two, three, some odd years later, we'll be talking about it again. Yeah. So it'll happen at some point. Just you know, stay tuned. Uh, what do we got here in um, seventy three? Yeah. 1973 Hank Aaron's record 1,378 base extra base hit surpasses Stan Musial record. Stan the man Musial. Oh. I uh, well, the, the, another 73 here, but that's we can skip over that. I'm going to take us to 76. Korean axe murder incident. This is <clears throat> a big one as well. Um, two U.S. soldiers taxed with uh, tasked with cutting down a poplar tree. Uh, blocking the view of uh, UN observers are killed by North Korea's Koreans, claiming it was planted uh, by Kim Il-sung in the Korean demilitarized zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So, 
uh, you know, the tree you know, it was obstructing a view. Yeah. So, of course, you know, they have to chop it down. But right. because it was allegedly planted by Kim Il-sung, who is like the god of gods to them, they're, you know, that's, that's like a religious affront. So, of course, they shot and everything. And the incident played out. We might talk about it later on, in, you know, like tomorrow or something or whenever uh, the calendar date is, you know, for when they did this. But in response... Uh, the U.S. came back in, like, you know, with an entire flotilla, like, an entire air wing, helicopters, artillery, tanks, like, a whole bunch. They came in with an invasion force, essentially, just to cut down this one tree. And they basically are like, hey, shoot us again. We dare you. You know, and yeah. they did not. And we cut, we, they, that tree was cut down. Well, let, let's so. break it down. You know, that's what the reason they said they did it. Yeah. The reason was you're not going to cut down uh, a way for us to hide behind something. Yeah. Well. It, so they wanted it there so they could hide. We wanted to cut it down so they couldn't hide. And uh, who won? Well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, you ain't going to hide. Two people died. I don't know if it's a win or not. Well. We're still technically at war. True. You know? They're so, at war. No, we, we North are. South. North and South, and by extension, us, because yes, we are true. allied with true. the South, and we are still at. Technically, we are still in a Wouldn't state. Wouldn't China be in the same position? Aren't they technically. Uh, uh, I think so. So, technically, we are at war with China. Well, that's the extension. I'm trying by, to think. I don't know. By a, by a secondary proxy, we are at war yeah. with China. So, all right. Uh, 1977, two girls are killed by a runaway car outside of Graceland. Yikes. Ooh. That's not good. 77 as well. Uh, Dodgers pitcher Don Sutton threw his National League record tying fifth one hitter. No, oh, he was uh -huh. a good one. Yep. Not the Drysdales or the Koufax, but he uh -huh. was the next level good. Uh, 77 as well. South African anti-apartheid activist Steve Biko was arrested at a roadblock. He died of police beating later on September 12th. So it wasn't enough that he was standing up for basic human decency, but they had to beat him to death? Okay. Sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, 1978, Memphis, Tennessee, settled with striking police officers and firefighters. Uh, I wonder why they were striking. You know, when, when, the, when, the, when the safety people, you know, are, are striking, you have some serious problems. So. I just officially want to say the last comment was obviously sarcastic. Don't want anybody oh. to misinterpret that. Oh, well, yeah. And 79, Iran's Ayatollah uh, Khomeini demanded a jihad war against Kurdish separatists. Yikes. You know, this guy oh, getting the on... the Kurds. Oh, yeah, yeah, the Kurds. Sure. Yeah. So, could you imagine, like, you know, watching the news, like, oh, I'm calling for a jihad. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, that's that's a crusade. That's a holy war. You know, death's vote. So, like, oh, that's, that's serious. Like, Boy, the Kurds were in trouble in uh, Iraq, too, up in northern Iraq. The oh, yeah. Turks didn't want them, and... Uh, but they're a tough bunch. Mm. The Kurds are just tough, so they just carve themselves out in a little north, uh, north uh, Iraq area. And I guess they didn't mess with them. Huh. It was hardly livable, but it, they called it theirs. Because they weren't going to be ruled by uh, Hussein. So I guess you can say people who don't like cottage cheese want the <laughs> Kurds out of the way? <laughs> they curdled. <laughs> Am, am I milking it? <laughs> oh, like, God. I knew you were going to go somewhere. That, I can't compete with that. It's non-homogenized. <laughs> what do we have in 81? Actually, 80, sorry. Ooh, perfect. KC Royals, George Brett, batting average, 400. Yeah, point four hundred. So that's yeah. good, right? Oh, like, yeah, 400. You better believe it. That's like a 5.0 GPA or whatever. What's a six? What's a what's a good GPA? Six five, whatever. Good GPA is three. Three. Okay. And well, higher. nobody and I don't know how many years it, but nobody's hit for the season 400 in like 50 years or more. And wow. I think it was. I might have been Stan Musial. I'm not sure, but wh whoever it was, they've come close in the high 300s. But nobody's hit 400 since then. It's years and years and years. Hmm. So he his batting average hit 400 for a while All in right. 1980. But he didn't finish there. All right. We got some football here in 81. Football. football. Yeah, football boy. 1991 football running back Herschel Walker of U University of Georgia takes out Lloyd's of London insurance policy for $1 million. $1 million. In case he gets hurt. Yeah. Yeah. 
1981, Jerry Lewis uh, appears on Donahue to defend telephones. Yeah, Jerry Lewis. Oh, it's telephone. Uh, tel yeah. Oh, I can't say it. Telethon. Telethon, thank you. Yeah, big telethon guy. He Multiple sclerosis, I think, was his deal. I That's believe it. so, yeah. Did that every year and raised millions. Oh, yeah. A lot of money. Give him, give him a kudos for that, you know, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, no, like, it, it, he's, he, he died, right, Jerry Lewis? Is he still around? I don't around? believe so. I think he's still around. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, uh, 27, uh, 2017. Oh, really? August 20th, 2017. I didn't know that. Age 91. No, I didn't know that. I um, knew he was old. But... There, there, you know, there should be, you know, still in his name, the Jerry Lewis, I you think know. It, I think it still goes on every year, yeah. I think It, it should, you know. What else do we got? 1982 Japanese election law is amended to allow for proportional representative re representation. Oh, all right. Means. Proportional yeah. representation. Yeah, I know. So I know, you know, you're being re represented proportionally. proportionally, which I'm all for. You know, that sounds good to me. You know. Uh, Depends on how it's structured. Yeah, uh, you got uh, three more 82s if you wish. New York. SE tops 100 meters shares traded or well, 100 million shares for the trade for the first time sets a new record of oh is that million one point one thirty two point sixty nine million shares traded in the New York Stock Exchange in eighty two wow <laughs> Uh, 1982, Pete Rose sets record for his 13,941st plate appearance. Jeez. So he's like up at bat, you know. That's so you know what I say. Put him in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh, but you missed one. Uh, yeah, longest. <clears throat> Two above it. Two above it. Longest baseball game at Wrigley Field in Chicago, Illinois, ends after 22 innings before L.A. Dodgers beat Cubs 2-1. Oh, game yeah. started on the 17th. More than two games. Wait, no, we were talking. No, this is the game we spoke about yesterday. Yeah. But yesterday it said 21 yesterday. innings. This says 22. Well, maybe it ended at midnight or something after midnight. Well, yeah. Well, then, well, yesterday it said that. Yeah, I thought it said 22. No, you know, you know the article yesterday. Said twenty one, and then it said it, it ended on the eighteenth, and this said the game started on the seventeenth, so this is the same game. And it start and ended on the eighteenth. Yeah, it ended today, which is yeah. the eighteenth. So like this is, but but yesterday it said twenty one. Now it says twenty two. Okay. So, but was it twenty one innings yesterday, and then they played the twenty second inning after midnight? Like, what, did the game that, end at one a.m. or something? Like, yeah, well, that's what I said, but I don't know. Why, why would they mention it on the 17th if it didn't end on the 17th? But it started. It says yeah. the game started. Uh, it started, okay. And then this is when it ended. Yeah. Maybe. That's, that's why I'm saying yesterday we reported on when it started. Yeah, but I thought they said the Dodgers won yesterday. Oh, it doesn't matter. It says the L.A. Dodgers defeated Cubs 2-1. Yeah, two to one. today it says that. What did it say yesterday? Well, you know, let me look. It, nah, it says, let's look. Oh, no, it's, it's, a, it's really quick. It says 1982, right? So I just got to go to 1982. So, uh, 82. Uh, L.A. Dodgers beat the Chicago Cubs 6-5 to five in 21 innings. Game completed 8-18. And, and this uh, is saying... 22 innings. 22 innings. But this is saying 2-1. 2-1. 6-5. to, one. Two to, one. Six to five. Different area. What year? Both 82. But right? they're both yeah. 82. And, and they're, Someone's wrong. Wow, that's a massive discrepancy right there. Yeah, something's going on. So I propose this as a challenge to the viewers. Uh, please what figure out which day? one is true if either one. You know, something something's wrong here. Uh, moving on up into 1983, the Kansas City Royals defeated the New York Yankees five to four, completing a pine tar game, 12 minutes. Uh, Hal McRae struck out, and Dan Quinsbury retired. Yankees in order. So the game was only 12 minutes long? Is that what it's saying? How could you do a whole baseball game in 12 minutes? Wait a minute. Uh, that can't be possible. Completing a pine tar game. What's a pine tar game? Well, as my memory serves me, uh, we just talked about in the, his hitting 400, <clears throat> that guy. Yeah. He uh, went up to bat and uh, hit a home run or something. And when he got around, got in the dugout, the uh, 
uh, umpire called him out because of pine tar too high up on his bat. The guy oh. came running out and uh, tried to fight the umpire. So I think they called the game and then completed it the next day. Okay. That's memory. It may not be accurate. George Brett, that's the guy's name. Well, maybe that's why. Do you think they reset the score halfway through the game? No, no, like no, a- no. They just had to finish the game. Huh. So they had they picked up where they left off. He was called out, and the next guy, when they scored a run in 12 minutes, it was over. Okay. Probably the, it was probably the bottom of the ninth. Huh. Uh, 1983 as well, Samantha Drews, aged 12 years and 119 days, became the youngest woman to swim the English Channel. Ooh. 12 years old? Woo-hoo. 12 Ooh. years old. Whoa. She's That's not super even, kudos. She's not even a woman. She's a girl. Like That's you're not crazy. even the youngest woman, and she's the kid. first girl yeah. to win the, to swim the you know, swim the Wow. Uh, what were you saying, Con? Here's 119 days. I said that's still a kid, dude. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we also have a survey of recently discovered Bronze Age uh, Ulu Buram shipwreck, uh, estimated around uh, 1320 BC, Jeez. off the coast BC. of Turkey. Found rich cargo of glass, spices, and enough tin and copper for 5,000 swords. Wow. Ooh. B.C. Though. B.C. Oh, a Bronze Age, dude. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. A shipwreck. Yeah. Wow. Uh, 1984, the Triangle Orange Corps above ground storage tank at Jacksonville, Florida, spilled 2.5 million gallons of oil burned after lightning sparked a fire. Oh, gee. Wow. So, that it's, so it spilled and the lightning hit it and it exploded. Yikes. <laughs> you talk about a double whammy. Yeah. Uh, 1985, the Su- Sui C launch. Haley's Comet flyby. So, like, you know, the I guess that's when it launched. So, this is when it launched for this. The, Sui what would, or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, the Sui Sui sounds launch. Like, sounds like a, German, uh, a Russian launch, huh? It sounds like uh, Japanese. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? Let me look this up. 1985, I think Japanese were in the space race by 85. Uh, let's see here. 1985 Sui Sui launch. Uh, what's what is this? Haley flyby operator, ISAS, Institute of Space and Aeronautical Science, Japan. I was right. Okay. So there we go. So it was Japan. I, I seem to remember you know Japan like doing a Haley's Comet flyby mission. So that's probably why. Yeah. yeah. Like, I guess Japan there. Uh, 1986. Yeah, name, name gives it away too. I guess. Yeah. Uh, 1986, Crockett's Tavern opened in Fort Wilderness. <coughs> Where? Disneyland? In 86? <laughs> Crockett's Tavern. Okay. Davy? D- well, I don't know what other Crockett. It's not, it's not, you know, Howard Crockett. Like, um, Crockett's Tavern. It's gotta be Davy Crockett. Yeah. That was their big deal. I was right on the money. Ford f- uh, food facility at Fort Wilderness Resort at Walt Disney World. Yeah. So, it was Disneyland, or Disney World. Disney World, Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, 1986, Jim Kelly signed with the NFL Buffalo Bills for $75 million for mm-hmm. five years. All right. Uh, 87, your turn, King. Ohio health care worker Donald Harvey sentenced to triple life for poisoning 24 patients. Ooh. Wow. What else? Uh, 1987. Oh, wait. 1987. Philip Rush of a new... Uh, NC. New Zealand, uh, yeah. New Zealand set record for triple crossing the English Channel. His time 28 minutes, 21 seconds, 10 hours. Boy, yeah, I think 28, it was 28 hours, hours, 21 minutes. Yeah, 10 yeah. hours faster than the first man to do it. Like, I don't 10 know, hours faster, geez. So, yeah, so 10 hours faster than, than the first guy, <clears throat> and that was one way. So the first guy who swam the English Channel did it in like 38 minutes. Or was it 38 hours? 38 minutes. hours, yeah. 38 hours or so. Yeah. This guy went back, forth, and back again in, in 10 hours less time. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, you know, the advancements, like, you know, like humans, like we evolve physically. We have better techniques. You know, we learn things like, so pacing and, and all that stuff. Yeah. So, like, you know, that's why I say, like, eventually we hit thresholds with records where... We could have a lot to do with, you know, we knew a lot more about currents since so you, you swim it in the ideal Oh, yeah, times, of course. Things yeah. like that. There's that, you know, and then seasonal currents, you yeah. know, yeah. like possibilities and all that jazz and all that stuff. Um, but, like, but I agree, like, like with the Olympics, 
you know, or or you know, just with you know, I guess not all professional sports, but you know, maybe like have you know one segment of the Olympics be, you know what? Screw it. Allow doping. Let's see how high a human being can really jump. Let's see how far. Let's see how fast. You know, like the, you know, there's. There is like there should be three tiers. There should be an everyman, so that way you know we know how we would fare generally as common citizens. You know, a professional athlete section where, you know, now we have like you know like uh, like a, a, a visible spectrum over how much better you know the the professional athletes are versus the layman, and then we have a drug section where screw it, let's just you know let's just see how how far we can do. There should be a three, you know, three of those tiers in the Olympics. Well, like, have you ever heard the term "doping is harmful for you"? It's not good. Well, but they shouldn't. Have, no, I, I, you're on. An if somebody, on there, if buddy. somebody wants to do it, <laughs> you know, let them. No, and, like, but that'd be actively don't. encouraging it. So I doubt they'd want any association right. want to do that because they get backlash from family yeah, members. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you you have a I point. Want to do this more often? You or have a point. Like that. You have a point with that. Uh, anyway, you know, uh, it would be cool as long as people weren't like, crazy. you know, like actively trying to like, like is if it wasn't increasing the amount of people that would do it, you know. Yeah. But that's kind of hard to do. You and, have a point so, there. Uh, in the a perfect Olympics world. Was, the Olympics was originally designed to be of the people, you know. All it was any professionals out. It was all amateur, well, and then different countries started gaming the system. Well, you know, that's how NASCAR started. It's, it used to be the North American Stock Car Racing. Yeah. You know, like, you know, yeah. N-A-S-C-A-R, yeah. NASCAR. You know, and that's not supposed to be souped up, you know, to the best of abilities. No, that was bare bones minimum. What is the cheapest of the cheap? Your stock, your your your, your basic stuff that, you know, that the, the generalized people are going to have. And that was the whole point of the race. Who has the better product baseline? Not who can make the best stuff, who has the best stuff right out of the chute, you know? And, like, you know, then, then that changed, so... we, well, they we have a criteria to what they consider stock, so they have a criteria that you can't... But it's not stock. You can't go over that line. No, it's not something you're going to pick mean, up down like, at your Ford dealer. I mean, it used to be, like, you know, the whole the whole point of stock car racing was, oh, yes. yeah, you know, I, no, I Dale Earnhardt's 45, I can go to, to my local corner, you know, Honda Center... And just grab that car, you know, right out of the lot. You know, have the exact same thing. No, you can't. Not anymore. Because of all the souped up crap. You know? Like, we got to go back. Anyway, uh, 1988, FDA approved minoxidil as hair loss treatment. And I'm pretty sure that was carcinogenic or something. Like, um... It should have been to prevent hair loss. Yeah, as a hair loss treatment. Treatment, okay. Yes. Okay. Like, that, that is to prevent hair loss. Um, but let's see here. Minoxicil, uh, topical routes, side effects, Mayo Clinic. Um, so Rogaine. Okay, so it yeah. became Rogaine. All right. Which, like, you know, I, and I know, like, you know, we're running out of time, but I just got to make this joke. Joe Rogan missed out on, like, the, the product placement of the century. <laughs> you know? Rogaine. Rogan. Yeah. You know, yeah. and he's going yeah. bald. Now he's bald. Like, you know. And, but he also, like, you know, get the Rogaines, you know? Like, because he's, he's you know, an MMA fighter. You yeah. know? Yeah. So. Anyway, 1988 as well. The largest house of 130 rooms on, the, <coughs> on Long Island was sold for $22 million. Whoa. Mm. What year was that? 1988. Ooh, that's a lot of <coughs> and thank you for exiting before doing that. Yeah. <laughs> Although it was Thanks still pointed into the room. No. Huh. Uh, 89 leading presidential hopeful Luis Carlos Galan was assassinated near Bogota in Colombia. Yikes. And we have one, two, three, four, five nineties, and then I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up uh, after that. So if you want to do the five articles, it's all you, uh, King. Pan American close in Havana. All right, the game's closed. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. 1993, historical Caper, Caperberg in Lozern, Switzerland, destroyed by fire. Ooh. It's never good. No. I don't know what that is, but historical, like, you know, like... Yeah. You know, I'm going to look that up while you're reading the next one here. 1994, 15th Commonwealth Games in Victoria, Canada. Ooh. Ooh. All right. 1994... 
5.6 earthquake in Algeria kills 171. Wow. And before you read the last one, this was the, it looks like it's been rebuilt, uh, but it says uh, the Cap Bel Bruque, which literally translates to Chapel Bridge. Uh, it is a bridge with a chapel built into it. Oh. So, like, you know, what you see here, like, you know, it's, yep. you know, it has a tower and everything. So, yeah, it, it's a, it's a, it's a chapel bridge. And it was burnt down, you know, since obviously reconstructed because these, I look at photographs, not artist renditionings, you know. So, thank goodness it's, 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 it's back. So that's good. And what's our uh, last but not least here? 2000. Oh, wait. 1996. 1996 record 6,653 tap at Macy's Tap O Mania in New York City. What? So the Tap O Mania, and I'm trying to. Um, okay, here we go. Tap O Mania was a huge <laughs> tap dance that used to happen outside Macy's in the summer to break the Guinness World Records every year. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it's a. It's a yearly event hosted by mm. Macy's to break the Guinness World Record of most amount of people tap dancing at, at once, once, I presume. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the Macy's Tap mm. Mania. And mm. apparently, according to this one, they had one uh, January 5th, 2022. Um, day 213. Happy birthday, Dad. So, you know, cool. Yeah. So, all right. Uh, but yeah, that'll conclude the show, you know, and you can see we have still quite a bit of history left that, you know, we cherry picked off of, you know, the main source, which has yet even more stuff. Uh, but yeah, that shall conclude the show. Once again, please check the underbar in the description below for any links you may be interested in, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition, as well as, you know, history sources and collected links and all that stuff. For your dose of Bats Events Daily, we stream every day at 11 in the morning Pacific time, which is 12 noon Mountain, 1 Central, and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, respectively. We do have other shows. Once again, please check the underbar for from history to news, movie reactions to reviews, and also Omni Kitchen coming back. So, uh, yeah, check the underbar. For all of you and all of us, I am A.O. Xander. King's Refuge. Connor. <coughs> Golden Loon. The and sidekick. You are not a sidekick. <laughs> and, of course, you viewer are you. Thank you very much for uh, showing up and watching. And until you catch us next time, whenever that is, wherever that is, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection, rate five thumbs, and subscribe. Toodles! Gases. Yeah. All right. Get that off. And in this here.